Welcome to Neural Habits, Introduction to the Nervous System, Ascending and Descending Traps. Now we are going to start our descent into the mysterious universe of the nervous system and how mind and body are interconnected at the core. This mind-body connection is accomplished along two lines. One, the brain needs to receive information from the different parts of the body. This is accomplished through information highways called the ascending tracks or pathways of the spinal cord. The ascending pathways are what allows us to know where our feet are without looking at them. Two, the brain needs to control the different parts of the body and tell them what to do. This is accomplished through other information highways that are called the descending tracks or pathways of the spinal cord. The descending tracks allow us to move when we so desire. The anatomy of the nervous system is incredibly detailed and complex. It is easy to become overwhelmed by the amount of information and to get lost in the complexity, not really understanding what it is that we are learning. For this reason, I will always give you an overview of the big picture first and then dive into the details. The ascending pathways. The dorsal column medial lemniscus are used to transmit epicritic pain information to the brain. This is a sharp and well localized burst of pain. It also transmits proprioceptive and kinesthetic sensations that allow us to feel where our limbs are. It also allows us to pass the two point tactile test. This allows us to discriminate between two nearby points on the body. The lateral spinothalamic tract is used to transmit protopathic pain information to the brain. This is a dull, deep, long-lasting aching pain, as well as temperature. The spinocerebellar tract enables smooth and precise movements of the limbs. This is out of our awareness as the tracks do not reach the aware part of the brain. The descending pathways. The corticospinal tract is used for voluntary control of the upper and lower limbs for movement. The tectospinal tract enables visual tracking of objects, and the rubrospinal tract controls flexor muscles. Other mammals, such as cats, use this tract more extensively than we do. The extrapyramidal or mixed pathways. They contain both ascending and descending fibers. The medial longitudinal fasciculus, MLF, coordinates the different muscles of the neck, head, and eyes so that we are able to track moving objects. The vestibulospinal tract controls the anti-gravity muscles that allow us to stand or sit straight and to keep our balance. Actions you can take right now to memorize the material. Take a blank piece of paper and write down everything you can remember. Do this right away. It should only take you about five minutes. Then, go over the review questions. This should only take you about 10 minutes. The review questions are on the website at www.neurohabits.com. Please visit www.neurohabits.com to subscribe to our website to download all of the videos, quizzes, and self-review questions.